Hello, this is Susan Green, Associate Curator of Special Collections, Archives, and Research at the Philbrook Museum of Art. And this is Curators at Home. Thank you for uh, joining me today. So we've been exploring uh, historic galleries, rooms in Villa Philbrook, looking at uh, photographs from the 20s and 30s, looking at photographs today, and maybe getting an insider scoop about the room, the history of the room. And so today, since uh, we've all been thinking about um, food and eating, things to cook, things to um, enjoy, and enjoying it with people, whether you're enjoying it um, via a Zoom call or if you're enjoying it in person, I thought we might uh, explore the dining room. So let's uh, take a look at the Villa Philbrook dining room. Of course, here is the front, or the front of Villa Philbrook in 19, probably about, oh, 1927 to 30. This is this photograph. Um, we, so the Phillips family lived at Villa Philbrook from 1927 until 1938, when they gave their home away to be um, uh, Tulsa's first art museum, and we opened to the public in 1939. So if you went in through these rooms, went into the hall and the great hall. You went down the hall and took a right. So down at the very end of this hall and took a right, you would go into the dining room. And this is what the dining room looks like today. So this wonderful light filled space, it has um, just truly lovely colors with the kind of pinks and the blues of the rug, the pinks of the drape. Um, and the colors are, are reflected in the artwork that's hanging on the wall. And we're so lucky to have the Gussman collection of 20th century um, European art in this space. And one of my very favorite paintings at Philbrook is Dufy's uh, View of Nice in France. And you have this beautiful bay um, and you see the water, you see the sunshine, you see the palm trees swaying. And I truly love the little hints of coral that are um, the roofs as you go up um, the hills in Nice. So uh, this uh, wonderful, rich painting reflects the colors in the room and it's just fantastic. But the room didn't always look like this. So if we look at another image, we can see what the uh, room looks like when the Phillips family lived at Villa Philbrook and what it looks like today and see, kind of see some of the differences. Um, so totally different, absolutely different. The footprint's the same, otherwise it's different. So um, the first thing that I think I notice is the ceiling. So the ceiling, when the Phillips family lived uh, here, it was uh, dark, paneled um, in these segments, kind of a coffered look. Um, each segment had a different shape. The shape was painted with mythological uh, figures and plants and flowers and shields, a really just this wonderful ceiling, which is uh, kind of echoes the ceiling in our living room, which is on the other side of the house. Um, and the ceiling is removed. And instead we have this very clean ceiling which allows us um, flexible lighting for the galleries. Okay, so the ceiling's different. Then look at the walls. So even in this black and white photograph, you can see the textured nature of the walls. So Villa Philbrook was Italianate in architecture and it took some of these Italianate features for the interior as well. So the uh, textured plaster of the interior walls. And now we have smooth walls with wainscoting. So wainscoting is that paneling from the floor to about hip or waist height that goes all the way around the room. And then uh, the drapes are sort of lighter in feel. Um, the furniture, of course, there's furniture when the family lived here. It's heavy, the big, heavy, thick wood, um, and this wonderful sideboard over to the side. And a um, the hanging on the wall across from the fireplace is actually a bishop's coat, uh, bishop's cope used for decoration. So a uh, um, a cloak that a bishop would wear, uh, which is no longer uh, appropriate for services because of its condition, but it was appropriate to hang on the wall. So uh, we have this really rich room and it changed. And so why did, we, why did it change? So what's the story, what happened? So 
when Villa Philbrook opened, while the Phillips family gave us their home and they gave us some um, objects of decorative arts and a few um, works of art and some fantastic um, objects, uh, Native American pottery um, baskets and some Southwestern paintings, they didn't have a huge art collection that they gave to Philbrook. So it took many years for the staff, the donors, the community of Philbrook to band together to um, uh, develop the collection as we see it today. So in our early years, instead of galleries filled with art on the walls, paintings and sculpture, instead we had period rooms. So here's an example. This photograph is from the early 40s, maybe, at, maybe at mid 40s. Um, and you can see that this room, this is when the transformation happened. Uh, it was decided that the dining room could easily be transformed into an early American room, an early American period room, showing what it was like um, perhaps in um, an upper class home in colonial America. So very British focused uh, in terms of the, uh, when we were, we were the colonies. The, uh, so they uh, um, covered the walls with uh, a, a paperboard, they took out the ceiling, they installed the state-of-the-art uh, lighting system, and I should say that the ceiling did not go anywhere. It was removed, but we kept it. And that's uh, a story for a different day, but don't worry, the ceiling is still on property. Um, and the, so uh, Wayne's coating around the uh, circumference of the room, paneling along the fireplace, much cleaner drapery, and it allowed uh, uh, British or early American furniture to be displayed in the room, including this uh, portrait by John Singleton Coplet, por Portrait of a Lady. So, and then in this photograph from the 60s, you can also see that um, there were niches added to the west side of the room, and not in the picture is the doorway. Originally, the doorway just um, had a, a simple um, door frame, and it was a, a triangular pediment or a triangle on top was added. All of this very evocative of 18th century um, with a leaning toward Great Britain, from a leaning toward England. And um, this, was, this room was a donation. The renovation of this room was a donation from um, the Daughters of the American Revolution. So this uh, civic group raised money to be able to restore the room and show um, part of uh, the history of the United States. Well, once um, Bill Brook had more of a collection, it was able to be, um, to show artwork, to show paintings as we had more artwork that came into, um, into our collection. But there's one thing that was changed in the room when it was a period room, but it was changed back when it became um, a gallery essentially again. And that is, have you caught it yet? And that is the fireplace. So the fireplace itself has a fascinating story. So this is the fireplace when the Phillips family lived here. And if you, we are so lucky to have in our archive our um, architectural plans. And this plan, you can see the drawings of our architect, Edward Bueller Delk, and how he sketched the profile, determined the rosette in this wonderful, um, kind of the leg of the fireplace mantle. Um, the rosettes, uh, the, the patterning, the carving, he specifies that it should be red Verona marble. He makes notes to a Mr. Simon, so perhaps Mr. Simon was the stone carver. And he, um, develops the idea for this very ornate marble fireplace. Well, when the Daughters of the American Revolution renovated the room, this fireplace was not appropriate for a colonial um, home. It needed to be more 18th century and feel, uh, echo the molding along the uh, top of the room, echo the silhouette that would be appropriate for 18th century Great Britain or um, colonial America. So they removed the fireplace. And um, it is with, uh, we are so pleased with the force, uh, foresight of uh, some of our previous staff members. Uh, in 1990, uh, the villa was remodeled. And 
it just so happens that a staff members remembered that somewhere stored on the grounds in the outbuildings in a garage, carefully stored, wrapped up, was this uh, marble mantle. It was taken apart, separated, stored in an outbuilding, so that in 1990, when we renovated the room, we were able to, while we kept the wainscoting, because that's absolutely part of our history, we kept the wainscoting, we kept the, mar um, the molding, but we were able to return the fireplace to the original fireplace as specified by Edward Delk for the Phillips family. And so here we have a, a one of our uh, amazing construction crew working on the room and you can see the marble fireplace has already been reinstalled. And so now we have it in all its glory, this absolutely truly lovely color, the red Verona marble and its beautiful um, carvings. And it, it was um, uh, really well stored, it was not damaged, and we we're incredibly lucky that we were able to uh, reinstall it after 50 years of being in storage. And so that pink again, really resonates not only with the rug and, and the um, drapery, but also with the artwork in the room, including this um, uh, kind of cubist, uh, fun expression of, of joy by artist uh, Andrei Lanskoy, a Russian artist. And I love it, the sort of the irony of it is that Lanskoy painted this, um, this uh, two Harlequins, this painting, just a couple of years after the um, room was remodeled to be an early American room. And so it's forward looking and we're able to uh, have it in the, in the gallery today. But there's another work of art I wanted to talk about today and that is a, a, a recent loan to Philbrook from the Tia collection in Santa Fe. So it was installed earlier in the year. It is um, by Yinka Shonabare, uh, who is a British and Nigerian artist, and uh, it is called Ms. Utopia. And if we look a little closer, you can see just the glorious abundance of Ms. Utopia. She has this spectacular dress made of um, African batik fabric, a, a series of different patterns in the fabric. The bodice is beaded. Um, she's of course holding this huge bouquet of flowers, just exuberant flowers. She has a globe for a head and she's gesturing off to the side. Um, I love the detail in this work. So one of my favorite things about the work is peeking out from under the dress is this fantastic shoe. So Shonibari um, did not miss any of the details. Even the shoe is bright, vibrant, uses the batik fabric and it's this wonderful high top, um, high heeled shoe. Uh, the, and here's a close-up of the flowers. The flowers are almost like origami. They're the folded fabric. And Shonabari is, uh, while this is Ms. Utopia, it's all about Eden and um, all the best that we wish for ourselves in the world. Uh, Shonabari is also thinking about our um, heritage of colonialism, of colonialism, prejudice, um, that, it, that stretches across the world. So with the batik fabric, uh, it, this um, technique of dyeing fabric uh, originated in Indonesia. It was um, seen by uh, the colonial powers from the Netherlands, from Holland, who and Indonesia was a co colony of Holland. And then they took that industry and they um, uh, created a fabric which then they sold in Africa. So it talks about trade, it talks about colonialism, and ways these um, areas of the world are connected, not always through uh, the, best, the, uh, the best stories. But here Shonabari has crafted this sculpture with exuberant colors, seeming, seeming joy, but always this undercurrent, knowing that we have this past we need to confront and understand. And one thing about her head is it's not a globe of the world, of the earth, it's a globe of our skies. And so it has all of the constellations, but instead of names of the constellation like Orion and Cassiopeia and Pegasus, instead the names of the constellations are things like Rhododendron Japonicum and Anemone Coronaria and Gomphrena Globosa. So flower names 
And these flowers, each of these flowers um, originates from a different part of the world. It may, may be from Australia or South America or Greenland and Norway. So these plants that we may know today like azaleas or gonfrina or anemone, um, and may in fact be readily available here for us, they came from around the world. And these stars in the sky are like the flower. The flowers are like the stars in our sky. And this, again, exuberant bouquet of flowers and then Ms. Utopia, where is she gesturing? But she's gesturing to our gardens. So thinking about the um, glorious outdoors that we have and are able to take advantage of when, when we're not social distancing um, and uh, being a part of the world and enjoying what nature provides us. And so with that, I want to thank you. I hope that you all will enjoy being outside at some point today. I hope there will be sunshine for us today um, and that you'll enjoy some flowers and enjoy being with people, whether you're on a phone call, um, a Skype or a Zoom call, FaceTime, um, and or being with your family in the same room and perhaps sharing a meal together. We want to thank you and we hope that at some point we'll get to see you back at Philbrook. So thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed our exploration of the dining room and we'll see you next time. Thanks.